You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't taste it. But over 20% of us, if not more these days, are sensitive to the emissions that are around us. You're actually looking in real time at transmissions that are around this building, flooding this room. You don't even realize it, but it's here. You're looking at a simulation, it's real time, and it's showing you what's in our environment, and you don't even know it's there. So, my name is Dan DeBorn. I grew up on Long Island. I worked in the aerospace industry early on in my career. Um, and I realized on Long Island, aerospace was dimming a bit. So I found another career in telecommunications. As Steve was mentioning, I went into the development organization first, and then ultimately I, I developed the standards and analyzed technology for the industry, the Bell system, for years and years and years. So I, I had a lot of experience with, with the technology that we had in our environment today. And by the way, I never thought about it, but our environment that I was testing was electronics against electronics, not electronics against humans. Um, I never, ever tested for electronics against humans. Um, fast forward to today, about seven years ago or so, I had my son visiting, they're adult men, and they had their laptops on their lap. My wife says to me, I want grandchildren, and that, that laptop on the lap can't be good for my son. And I said, and then she says, I want grandchildren. And so I said, the power levels of the electronics around us cannot be damaging. We don't have to worry about anything. It is harmless to our children. But I said, well, let me take a quick look and see if that's true or not. And so I began reading some of the research at the time, and I found that even at that time, over 25% of the male sperm is immobile after three or four hours of exposure in the lab. And as you, some of you may know, over the last 10 years, 50% of the male capacity to bore children is dropped by 50%. Um, a coincidence or not, I don't know. Um, and so a few years, and at the same time, I also found a research study out of Italy, and it, and it said that the female womb is also affected by emissions. The emissions were, I'm gonna go on this side so I don't get hit from that side, by the way, if you were here before. <laughs> so, uh, so I found that 2%, they had a large population of uh, females that they studied, and they, they found that 2% had a, a tumor. Of that group, a small percentage were cancerous. So I, we got more and more involved, my son and I, and we decided there was so much information on the research side that nobody knew about, including me, that was in the middle electronics for years and years and years. So that, that gap was because somehow all that research was getting not becoming available to us. And so my son and I decided, let's write a book. Maybe tell everybody what it is. Maybe understand what we knew about in the research and things we can do. So today, what I'm hoping to do is give you a definition of what electromagnetic radiation is. And from there, we'll talk about what the standards are and what we know about the testing that's occurred, and then maybe a little bit what we can do in our own lives uh, to minim minimize or mitigate those emissions that could affect our body. After that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about 5G, because anybody who talks about electromagnetic radiation today has to talk about 5G. Um, most people don't understand the real problems with 5G, and I hope to share enough where we all can sort of look at it what do we want to worry about, and what do we, what do we don't need to worry about? Hopefully, we'll get a, a pattern of understanding of those things. So um, let's move on to the next chart. 
is very controversial. Uh, when we got involved, you had the industry that's providing the services to us that's saying there's literally no air concerns. There's no problems at all. And then we had the researchers, the preponderance of researchers, saying there is a problem. There's direct links to many of the problems we have in our daily lives with our bodies. So what I'm speaking about today is, is controversial. Is it a, can it harm, harm you? Uh, are you safe? Is there things you can do to be safe? Or are you not? And I put a little cartoon there, sort of hedging my bet a little bit. Um, that's a lot of money being made. The industry's making a whole bunch of money. So in our environment, we have very powerful points of view that become public. And uh, quite honestly, the researchers don't seem to have the same similar power as some of the influences in the marketplace as the service providers have. Why today? Why is it important to understand it today? Um, when I had a cell phone 25 years ago, I would call my friends. But of course, none of my friends had a cell phone. So when I used it, I didn't use it very much. Most of us didn't have cell phones, so we never really got exposed to much. If you look today, however, over the last 10 years or so, all of us have cell phones. Even our kids have cell phones. We have laptops, we have tablets, we have so many things that are in our environment that is now contributing to the ambient and our, in where we are, the buildings we're in, and that is far substantially greater than the exposures 10 years ago. So why now? It's become a problem that's in our front door, in our room, in our homes. We're gonna talk a little bit about that some more. Um, this is one of these charts I use, and there's a test after this, by the way. Um, electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation, is, is, it's a power. It, you can't see it, but there's a powerful image, a signal that's hitting your body, and, um, and it's that constant barrage of that uh, and the many sources of that that are potentially creating the problem we just spoke about. 